call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us. Oh, my God. 
being lambs and sheep? What, what do you think they mean that? Because you're not, you're not a lamb, are you? You don't look like a lamb. But don't you think the Bible refers to us as lamb and sheep? Because the lambs and the sheep, they need Jesus to love them and guide them. I'm sorry? That's right. A very good observation. Yes. And he takes care of us and he leads us, right? And, and so we can have a happy heart because we love Jesus and we have a happy heart. Oh, okay. Okay, does everybody know the song, I Am Jesus, Little Lamb? Everybody knows this song. Do you want to sing it? You don't want Miss Rita to sing it. Mr. Deep, Mr. Meese won't let that happen. So how many of you guys sing? I Am Jesus, Little Lamb. Come on, you guys know this song.
churches that used this alone to have church signs inviting visitors to come. I don't know about you, but I would find it hard to walk into a different church, especially by myself. But if I knew someone in that church, someone who I respect, someone who has a heart, then it might be a different story. I might let my defenses down, and maybe, just maybe, I would be open to a spiritual talk and an invitation to attend their church. So back to my opening question. What motivated you to come to church today? Now, I think the beginning of the answer is the people. Our people. You. Now today is Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday, and the Lutheran Women's Missionary League is an auxiliary, as we talk about it, or a recognized service organization of the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod, our national church body. And it has many members all across the nation. As the word missionary in their name suggests, they sponsor mission efforts reaching all around the world. And they do it with just the pennies you guys put in those little teeny boxes and bring to church. Small offerings that together help more and more people learn the good news about Jesus. For this LWML Sunday, I'd like us to consider here, chapter 1, verse 22, which says, Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Yeah. Now they say a picture is worth a thousand words, and you can picture today's sermon by simply looking at our logo for LWL Sunday. Our hearts in his hand. So look at this. You got a little heart in a hand. Literally, think about that for just a moment. A hand holding a real heart. You know that's what transplant surgeons do. He takes out the diseased heart and he puts in a new heart. You know what? That's what God has done for you and for me. Now, do you see the cross at the top of the logo? And do you see that little water droplet in the middle of the logo? Well, I think we all know what that cross represents. Jesus dying on that cross to forgive us of our sins. And what do you think that drop of water represents? Baptism, exactly. So baptism gives you a new heart, a pure heart with all the benefits of Christ's death and resurrection. In our Old Testament today, long ago, Ezekiel promised, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And God has indeed kept his promise. Unlike a physical transplant that lasts just a few years, the new heart God gives you through baptism lasts forever. Unless you think this is just a routine church talk, let me just pause here. For just a moment. Why did God give you and me this transplant? Well, here's one. I have within my heart thoughts, feelings, ideas, and urges that are sinful. But what if what is deep down in my heart within me ever came out? I would be so ashamed of it. I tell it right out of here. Don't you also have things deep down in your heart that would shame you if others knew? My heart by nature is not pure, and if we're honest with ourselves, neither is yours. We are born with original sin inherited from sinners before us, all the way back to Adam and Eve, all the way back to the garden where they first sinned against God because of their simple desires to be like God. Sooner or later, what's deep down is going to be known. As Hebrews 4.13 tells us, no creature 
future is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. This sin in us, original sin and the actual sins we commit daily, this is the old Adam and Eve who continues in us. Yes, even in us who are forgiven. Oh, thank you, Lord, for forgiving us. Still, this sin will continue until we die. You know, when you go to a funeral home to pay your respects to someone who's died, that person before you is no longer sin. When you die, thank God, you finally stop sinning. And that's the wonderful mystery of baptism. Baptism brings us the forgiveness of Jesus Christ here and now and gives us grace to live new and holy lives here and now. St. Paul says, we were buried with him by baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. St. Peter describes it as a new birth. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Mysteriously, baptism is your daily death and new birth. When a surgeon transplants a human heart, New physical life comes to the fatally ill patient. Now, God has mysteriously given you a new heart, a pure heart, newness of life. And with life God gives, you have love, His love. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere, brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that's the church. A big-hearted place where all our hearts are together in His hands. A big-hearted place filled with love. Now, at the start of the sermon, I asked what motivates you to come to church. The beginning of the answer is, I think, people, you, me, all of us together. As we experienced during the COVID crisis, we can't hear the Word of God over the internet. But being together in person around the world is the truest reason we come together. Together with one another, God gives us His Word. His Word of new birth, of life, and love in Christ. Together, we receive His transforming Word as we hear it spoken and sung as we receive it physically in baptism and the Lord's Supper. Now there are various reasons we come to church, but more than anything else, we come to worship because here all our hearts are together, not only together with one another, but most importantly, together with one another in His hand. When you think about it that way, there's something about worship that is different from other groups or associations you have during the week. Well, there's a multitude of them, isn't there? There's our Kiwanis clubs, there's our Eustace Chamber, Mount Dora Chamber, Tiberius Chamber, all oh, there's the Lions Club, the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, you name it. There's all kinds of wonderful groups we can be a part of that we can come together with weekly to come together to do good. And that is all well, and it is all good. But isn't there, shouldn't there be something different about being together here? Something uniquely special about fellowshipping with church members, gathering as the baptized to hear God's word and receive Jesus' body and blood in Holy Communion. This is what is unique about coming together each week
PowerPoint struggling tonight.
to God for that. Uh, we're also lifting up uh, Lana's son-in-law, Jason, who also happens to be my neighbor on my block. Uh, he had to go into the hospital with an infection uh, that was really scary for a while that he's out, and we're just making sure he doesn't have to go back in. And then uh, Jimmy, Pat and Lyons, uh, nephew, unfortunately took a turn for the worse. So we are, again, lifting him up in prayer before God for these additional prayers. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you search our hearts and have seen our sin, and yet your love has reconciled us to yourself through your Son. Give us your Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, that lives may grow in devotion to you for the salvation you have so graciously given us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, we pray our congregation in life and witness. Give us your grace so that in a land where strife is too common, we will be a place of peace. In our divided nation, make this your congregation a gathering place of hearts united in you who extend your welcome to all. Inspire all the members of your congregation to love this place where your name is invoked and your grace proclaimed. Lord, in your mercy, for the mission of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League in this congregation and throughout the world, that every heart will beat with your love and all hearts extend your hand of service to others. To the faithful gathering of lights, may Lutheran Women and Mission continue to encourage us to put all you have given us into the mission of reaching the lost and caring. Lord, in your mercy, for the daily bread that sustains us in life, for food and health, for housing and clothing, for employment, for moderate weather, for justice and peace in our community and nation, that in every time of abundance and time of need, we may know your peace in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, for the nations of the world, let concord and peace prevail among them. Remember those who rule over us and guide those who influence our lives. Remember our children, our youth, the married couples, and those living single lives, the widows and orphans, and all those who are dealing with disappointments in life. Remember the sick, the suffering, and the persecuted, and the dying. We especially lift up the family and friends of Bernice, and we lift up Glenn, Stephen, and Craig, Joseph, Lois, and Henry, Leonidas, Kim, and Jim, Cricket, Rosie, and Eleanor, Jenny, Carol, and Jason, Jimmy, Deborah, Sherry, Calvin, Mary, and Alyssa. Send them help from your sanctuary and by your spirit strengthen them according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, for communicants who come to your table to eat and drink your son's holy body and blood, that they draw in here with humble confidence in your forgiveness and reliance upon your promise of nurture as we faithfully walk the heavenward way. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I would invite the elder on duty to please bring forth your congregation all.
leadest us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had advanced, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in the remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had advanced, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do, as often as you drink it, in the remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome to the table.
rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you and body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, the Father, the fountain and the source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.
And where are you visiting us from, my dear? Oh, wonderful. Very good. What's your sweet little doctor? Oh, our neighbor. Nice. Very cool. Wait, which one are you guys? <laughs> Overland. Very cool. Awesome. Well, across the bend, we're going to give you some yours to keep, and there's a little bit of things to go with that. If you don't mind filling up the form for us, we'd love to tell you more about the ministry. And just whenever you're in town, you make this your church home, and tell me your first name. Rachel. Nice to meet Rachel. This is Ben's aunt, Rachel. Very cool. Nice to have you with us here. Welcome. Very good. Did I miss anybody my guess they get to meet Rachel? All right, over here. First time guest visitors in this section? Okay. No, Em says no. No, no, we got to cover that. <laughs> First time guest visitors in this section here? All right, and I know Em, so we are good to go there. Um, one quick thing, and then I'll let Louise take over. Uh, we have four, count them, four free tickets to hear Benjamin Watson, who is a former NFL player and is going to be the speaker for our Life Choices Banquet this year. And dinner is provided by Pisces Rising. These are four free tickets to come for this annual fundraiser for Life Choices. I think they'll be at the table with me. Right, Ruth? Where's Ruth? Where's Ruth? They'll be at my table, right? Two at my table. Okay, so if you get your tickets first, you get to sit at my table. <laughs> right? If you get your tickets late. <laughs> so Ruth, just stand up and wave your hands so everybody knows who you get those from. Wonderful. Ruth is back here. She'll make herself available in the back there. Uh, you don't want to miss this, guys. Every year, this is literally all of our local senators, all of our local uh, people that are major business holders, all of our major people in the community that come and support, and of course, all the area pastors and all the area churches participate in this to fight for the lives of children in the womb. So important for us to do it winsomely and lovingly to young women in crisis pregnancy and help them bring that child to term and really be there for them. Uh, we've had former students of faith that we've been able to help. We've had all kinds of kids we've been able to help. So we really want to keep this ministry going and want to be a part of that. But today, uh, you can get four free tickets to get there. I mean, Pisces rising, that alone, that alone should get you there. <laughs>
people need in our school and a few in our church. So the sign-up sheets are out there. I'd like to get them filled today. We don't need to bring it back until the 13th or 14th, but that's an outreach in our community with the social workers, our school, and our church. And I asked the volunteers at Agape. I want to thank Susan, Mary, and Ray for coming and helping out. Three people volunteered that filled the spot that we needed because we're helping so many families. Okay. All right, Pastor, I think that's it, except for Josh. Yeah, uh, so if you did not hear uh, through the email, if you're not on our email mailing list, uh, please get on that. That's one of the number one ways I communicate with you all during the week. Joshua Vera, our former seventh grade homeroom and English teacher, is coming back from the mission field, and he's been accepted to attend seminary, Concordia Seminary, in St. Louis. So, very excited about that. We got some, we got some financial challenges that we are going to be looking forward to helping him with that. Um, but we're ready to go, and we're excited. Um, uh, some of you know that there are other people who are actively seeking and working on getting into the ministry. Two thousand. Listen to these numbers carefully. 2,000 requests were made to our teaching colleges to teach our church workers, right? 2,000 requests were made. How many of those were they able to fill of those requests to you get? Okay, that was a little low. 80. They were able to provide 80 church workers out of the 2,000 we requested nationwide. And you know what, folks? That's our fault. That's because we're not sending our young men and young women up to those colleges to be trained. So we are really making a hard push at that to get this. I'd like to see two of our kids every year at seminary to fulfill the needs we're going to have in the ministry because I had three vacancies this year and I about killed myself trying to fill those vacancies in our little circuit. So we need pastors, we need teachers. God bless Amanda York, my wife. She was able to come in as a contractor. We're going to qualifize her and get her called. So we're finding every way we can to do that. But if you know a young man or a young woman that looks like a great candidate for full-time church work, please let me know so Mike and myself and Tim can all start steering in that direction and let them know we need you in the ministry. Guaranteed jobs, kiddos. Where's my college kids? Guaranteed job. <laughs> right now, we will put you to work. I promise, all right? The pay isn't great, but the benefits are out of this world. <laughs> Any other announcements from Good Church or the community? Seeing so none? Oh, sorry, I sorry. Sorry. I have two really quick ones. Friday's Kinks Kids for 3 to 5 o'clock for pre-K and fourth grade. And October 30th, please get in your sign-ups for Trunk or Treat. We're still looking cars, and if you don't want to provide a car, but we want to provide candy, we will take that as well. I'll drop off in the school or church office. Absolutely. And remember, services on Saturday the 30th at 4. Repeat after me. 30th 